You are listening to the Fancy Free Podcast, where my guests and I tell our most embarrassing funny stories so that we all feel less alone in our imperfections and forge connection through vulnerability and humor. I'm Joanne Jarrett, and I am your host. And you guys, my voice might sound a little bit weird today. I actually was ill with COVID the last couple of weeks. I'm much better now, and I apologize if I had had audio in the bank. I wouldn't have subjected you to this sound of my voice, but alas, I did not. Today, I have with me Teresa Bodecker. Teresa and I are both writers for the site Her View From Home. And if you haven't checked that out, you've got to. It is chock full of awesome stuff, if we do say so ourselves. (laughs) (laughs) Teresa is a mom of two children 15 years apart. She said at first she had one learning to talk and one talking back, one learning to drive and one driving me crazy. Now one is the mama of two cuties and the other is starting college. Oh my gosh. Her husband and she live in Missouri and enjoy walking, gardening, and laughing at their complete oppositeness. She's a former English teacher, now writer, speaker, and humor hunter who enjoys telling a funny story. She writes about life lessons, parenting, self-help, and Christian topics with both a serious and funny viewpoint. And she blogs at TeresaBodecker.com. Teresa, thank you so much for being with me today. Hey, thanks for having me, Joanne. Absolutely. So is your baby starting college this year or has just started college? She just turned 18 and just started college. And he is going to a university in town where we live. So that is nice. We didn't have to say goodbye and like, you know, ship him across the United States and then wait till Thanksgiving to see him or anything. Is he living at home or is he in the dorms? He is living at home, but he leaves about... Eight o'clock in the morning and comes home about 10 o'clock at night. So, <laughs> so you talk to him on the weekends? <laughs> yeah, I talk to him on the weekends and in the evening a little bit when he comes home. Starting to get that empty nest feel, you know? Yeah. A little bit. I think it's going to feel bad and good all at the same time. Has that been your experience so far? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Having two children so far apart was like having two only children. Totally. What is their relationship like? I'm just curious. Well, that that is very interesting because my daughter, when I was pregnant with Christian, always said, oh, mom, we're never going to be close, you know what I mean, 15 years apart. And I said, Ashley, eventually you will both become adults. And when Mm -hmm. you're married and have kids, you're like the same age on the same page forever. But she has worked very, very hard at keeping a good relationship with my son, Christian. And so they'll talk. They've always spent time talking she has gone out of her way to like call him and talk to him on the phone. Hmm. And when we will go on trips together, you know, like family trips, they'll all come and we'll come and yeah. she always makes a big point of spending time with him. That's awesome. What a good it girl is. you have there. Oh, it's very nice. I tell my girls and you know, I have the opposite situation. My girls are 22 months apart, but I do tell them, you know, you need to guard that relationship. This likely is the longest earthly relationship you'll have. And oh, yes. it's a really big deal that you nurture that and you t- you care for it. And I know at times that you, you just want to run in the opposite direction and that's normal and that's okay. But just keep in mind how important the sibling relationship is, you know. <laughs> it is very important. All righty. Well, let's get to know you a little bit better with some rapid fire questions. What was your very first job? Oh, my very first job was a blueberry picker. Oh, really? And I did it for seven years. There was a blueberry field like three miles down the road from our house and we'd ride our bikes and pick, you know, 100, 125 pounds and ride home. Let me just say it's the hardest way to earn money. That's pretty cool that you could ride your bikes. Yes. That's But hard labor out in the sunshine, man. (laughs) Hard labor. (laughs) Okay. If you had 24 hours in your home alone with no pressing to do's, what would you do? Can you even imagine that? No, I can't. But I think what I would do is I would read pretty much all day, eat Mm -hmm. chocolate, and Mm -hmm. take a couple naps. Mm. Uh, Me too. Can I come over? (laughs) I I promise I won't talk to you. (laughs) What's the scariest thing you've ever done for fun? The scariest thing we ever did for fun was went on a river rafting trip. So we were on this river in Oregon, and it was probably the end of October. And it was not sunny. It was not a good day to be on the river. Mm. I really thought... I was going to be left behind somewhere. And I remember we went over this one drop or something and we all ended up sitting in different places and I was (laughs) freezing and my mom slid down (gasps) the whole front of me and down one of my legs. And I think she took 
every piece of skin, like a sandpaper just went down. Oh. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, terrifying. <laughs> but I wanted to have something to hold on to, but there was really wasn't anything to hold on to. It was something. And all I just remember thinking when we got done, you couldn't get me on a raft anytime soon. <laughs> it's like we survived and we're not going to test that theory again. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> what is your silliest memory with your best friend? Okay, we went to this restaurant left her at the table and I walked into the bathroom. I got in the stall and there was a big room and the stall was just in one corner of the room. So I go to the bathroom, come out of the stall, walk over to the sink and washing my hands. I look up in the mirror. I see this guy with his back turned to me in the opposite corner at the bathroom. And I'm thinking, is he washing his hands? And then I realize he's going pee. And I'm like... (laughs) Oh, my word. But I was in the bathroom first, you know. Hmm. Yeah. I thought, do I walk out? How do I get out of here without him noticing me? (laughs) And he's going to turn around. Does he not hear me? (laughs) Oh, I finished washing my hands and immediately left. And I don't know if he was waiting for me to leave. You know what I mean? And as I'm walking out, I realize there's a lock on the door you come in before you go. And I thought, oh, that's why they have a lock on the big bathroom door. (laughs) And also on the stall door inside. Okay, that is not obvious. If it is a one-seater, there should not be a stall. (laughs) That is not (laughs) obvious. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, I just thought it was the women's bathroom. Right. And I didn't see the urinal when I walked in because it was around the corner. I just said, if you go to the bathroom, lock the big door. Lock the first door you go through. Just trust me. It's going to be awkward, but it'll be worth it. (laughs) Oh, Lordy. As you know, the point of this podcast is to tell stories just like that so that we remind (laughs) each other that we are not alone in our imperfections. And furthermore, these things that happen to us are actually a blessing because they help us forge connection with each other by showing each other our underbellies and laughing together. So what do you have for us today? Okay, so this happened quite a few years ago. So it was when my daughter was young, and my husband had just moved into the house, and my daughter and I arrived a couple days after he had been living there. And one of the first questions I asked him, I said, when you go out the kitchen door, does it automatically lock? No, 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 it doesn't. I said, okay. So we had moved in that weekend. So Monday came, my husband, Curtis, got up to go to work. And he's like, can you make me a quick lunch? And I'm like, okay. So I get out of bed and I'm wearing nothing, but all the windows are closed and everything like that. And I thought, okay, I'm going to jump in the shower in a few minutes or go back to bed. So I ran to the kitchen, made him a really quick tuna fish sandwich, handed him his lunch. He kissed me out the door. He goes, I'm starting to walk down the hall to the bedroom. And I smelled the tuna fish can. I thought, Teresa, you don't want to wake up and still have that smell. So Mm -hmm. I picked up the tuna fish can, opened the door to the garage, stepped out on the little balcony, you know, that's then it's four steps down to the garage, leaned over, dropped the empty can into the recycle bin, turned around. The door had clicked shut, but I thought, no, no problem. Went to open the door. The door was locked. Oh, no. And I thought to myself, what? This is the last time I make a tuna fish sandwich in the buff, man. <laughs> this is right. I thought it can't be locked. Now, he told me. I specifically <laughs> asked him, right? He you told did reconnaissance on this very issue. It did not work. <laughs> so I tried the door again. Ugh. Totally locked. And I'm looking around. And all that's in this garage is, and it's pretty cold. And I look into the garage There's some empty boxes and then there's unpacked boxes. And I'm just like, you got to be kidding. And I, so I'm thinking in my brain, okay, what are my options? My daughter's sleeping. She's about four years old. I thought, okay, I could wrap a box around me, you know, like, (laughs) you know, like jump in a barrel. Look, I'm going to jump in a box, kind of tuck it around me. I had met the neighbor the day before. I thought I could go knock on her door, ask to use the phone, pretend I'm really dressed. (laughs) You know, and then come back out and then wait till my husband got home because my daughter was asleep and I thought, well, I could knock on her window to wake her up. She wasn't going to wake up for about another hour, but her window was about five foot off the 
ground. Oh, and geez. I thought, okay, so I wrap a box around me, <laughs> then try and <laughs> find a rake or something, <laughs> tap on her window. And I thought, okay, Chris, Teresa, now you're attracting attention to yourself. <laughs> and then I thought I could tell her if I, if I finally got her to wake up, I'd say, go unlock the front door. Then I remembered my husband had put a child-friendly lock oh, brother. <laughs> way up there. So there's no uh-huh. way she so could So she couldn't it. escape into the street. <laughs> so then I'm thinking, okay, I could wait till she wakes up and, you know, is wandering through the house. Looking finally, because her, her bedroom was at the total opposite end of the house. Finally makes her way into the kitchen, you know what I mean? I bang on the door. Ashley, open the door. <laughs> okay, that would be quite a wait. And I thought, okay. About half a mile down the road, at the beginning of our neighborhood, there was a payphone. I could wrap a box around myself and walk down there, barefoot, make a collect call. Oh, well, anyway, all these things were rushing through my brain. And as they're rushing through my brain, I'm getting angrier and angrier. And I'm no longer as cold either. (laughs) I got that going for you. (laughs) So I thought... Tried the door one more time. Nope. So I just started kicking that door. And I kicked it. <laughs> and I kicked it. And pretty soon it was starting to wiggle a little bit. And pretty soon I kicked it open and it broke the faceplate. And it was open. I like that plan. It hadn't even occurred to me. You went all naked Hulk woman on that door. <laughs> and I get inside that room. I run to the telephone. And I pick it up and then I looked at the clock and I thought, oh, he's not at work yet. I just have to wait 10 more minutes. So I'm (laughs) pacing up and down through my kitchen and family room, creating this, you know, path in the rug, back and forth, back and forth. Finally, 10 minutes pass and I pick the phone up and I dial it and he goes, hello, this is Curtis. And I said, you lied to me. (laughs) And I just screamed it. And he's like, what? And I just screamed it again. You! lied to me and he's like who is this <laughs> I said this is your wife you lied to me he's like what are you talking about I said that kitchen door does lock it automatically locks he's like well how do you know and I said well I was just out there butt naked locked myself out of there I had to kick the door down to get back inside he's like what And then all of a sudden, he just burst into laughing. And that just made me angry. I'm like, how can you you laugh at me? (laughs) Now that I was safe in the house, and now that my adrenaline was starting to calm down just a little bit, I did see the funniness in it. And I did start to laugh with him after about a minute or two, you know. But... (laughs) It's not where you want to be when you're butt naked. Many lessons to be learned here. (laughs) Many lessons. Now, this is funny because I told this story several times when we lived in Seattle and people thought it was hilarious. And then a number of years passed and my daughter was about 18 and we had just moved into the Midwest and we were going to a new church and there was this women's weekend retreat. And so her and I both signed up for it. And they were doing this, you know, game, like get to know you. And if you got the most yeses, you got a prize. And so like, have you locked yourself out of the house? And I wrote, yes. And my daughter goes, mom, tell them the story. And I'm like, what story? Oh, oh yes. Yes. The story about me. So I start to tell the story. And I get, well, you know, I got up out of bed and I didn't have any clothes on, but I was going to make my husband a tuna fish sandwich. And this lady just goes, what were you doing naked? And another lady goes, is this a common habit of yours? Do you walk around oh your house God, naked? grilled you. Oh, jeez. And then another lady's like, are you a nudist? And I'm like, <laughs> what? what? I'm trying to tell a story. You've totally ruined my whole story. Oh you ruined it. I never did get the story out. They were so focused on what was I doing? In, is this common? Do you just like walk around your house naked all the time in front of your kids? I'm oh, like, Lordy. no, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> just like, you're like, Lady, ladies, why are you making this sorted? This is normal. If it, <laughs> oh my gosh. Crazy. Oh. So that was like, oh no. Okay. Never mind. I'll, I'll I won't tell that story. (laughs) Uh, This is the wrong audience. I can tell right away. We're we're, we're moving on. (laughs) Oh, my God.
gosh. <laughs> well, okay. So first I was thinking, maybe she has a moving blanket in her garage. I'm like trying to solve the problem for you as you're telling the story. But moving blankets are icky and scratchy and awful. And I'm just not sure I would wrap. I think I would probably choose a box over a moving blanket. That did run through my brain, but they had all been returned with the truck. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Well, and then my dad has this crazy pair of coveralls that he puts on every time he works in the garage. Ever since I was a kid. I don't know any other men who do that. When I was a kid, I thought it was normal, but he just has this like grease monkey pair of coveralls. He puts over his clothes. I couldn't imagine that being comfortable. I would not do that. But I thought maybe her husband has coveralls. (laughs) She could go traipsing through the neighborhood in giant coveralls. (laughs) That would have been more preferable to a box. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, and then thinking about you knocking on your neighbor's door with nothing but a box around you. And then can I come in and use the phone? I can't. Can I borrow your robe or, or can I just stay here in my box? I'm going to have to stand because I can't sit down in this box. <laughs> no, my box doesn't, you know, go into other positions. <laughs> my box doesn't bend. <laughs> oh, man. oh, my gosh, you poor thing. And bare feet, too. Lesson number one. Maybe there should be an item of clothing in everyone's garage because you just never know when this is going to happen to you. But... But if you if you obey lesson number two, which is never make a tuna fish sandwich in the nude, <laughs> you won't have to worry about clothes in your garage. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, every home we have ever lived in since then, I have a key hidden in mm, the garage. There it, there it is. Yes. So I have never had to kick down another door because there's always a key. <laughs> but you know you have the skill. You can go make a hook lady on a door if you have to. <laughs> And then there's the whole then there's the whole issue of good naked and bad naked, you know, like <laughs> I'm pretty sure kicking down the garage door was not good naked. Thank goodness there's no footage of that. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's kind of like posing with yourself all sucked in and cute, good naked. Clipping yes. your toenails, bad naked. <laughs> kicking down the garage door, probably real bad naked. <laughs> Unless you're like, you know, G.I. Jane or something and you're all fit. But who, who's like that in real life? Nobody. Right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it so much. <laughs> it's time to talk now about life hacks. Do you have a quick life hack for the listeners? Yes. Actually, I do have a life hack. You always keep a nighty. On the um, slung over your headboard. And that way, you know, you can easily get dressed while laying in bed when you need to get up in the middle of the night. So smart. (laughs) That is so relevant. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Once I had a son, you know, I had to be careful. And he would come into my bedroom, you know, and like, mom, mom, I need something. And so that's what that's when I developed that hack, the nighty slung over the headboard. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my boobs are way too floppy to sleep in the nude. I don't know about you, but I get them caught in my armpits. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm like, this, this, that's the whole reason why I developed a, you know, a nighty line that has shelf bras. But anyway, I digress. I mean, I used to be able to when I was younger. I don't know. Everyone has different habits. Right. You know, we are a medical family, and so we don't have a lot of modesty. And our kids have, we only have two daughters. And so that's a little different. But our kids have seen both of us naked multiple times because we have a glass shower door. And if they want to come in and ask us something while we're showering, it's just not a big deal. You know, body parts are body parts. But I didn't grow up that way. I grew up a totally different way where my parents, I never saw either of them naked. Right. I mean, they're just all different ways to do it. So... There are all different ways. In in our family, we would walk, you know, to the bathroom in our underwear. I saw mm-hmm. my parents in my underwear, saw my mom get out of the shower. No big deal. Yeah. And I remember going to my friend's house and her brother walked in and she was in a full length slip. I mean, all the way down to her knees, a slip. Like a dress, basically. Yeah, like a dress, like uh-huh. a summer dress that, you know, her brother had walked in on her with, with a slip, you know, and he got in trouble. And I was like, <gasps> what? Oh is there something gosh. wrong with that? I mean, like, because we walk around in our underwear. <laughs> yeah, it is so interesting. And it's funny when you start comparing notes with people because you just assume the way you did, had it growing up is just the way it is. But every family is so different that way. And then it's funny how, you, you know, your family of origin and then your family that you create, you, you sometimes do things differently for no particular right. reason. It's not like I thought the way I grew up was wrong at all, you know, but right. we're, just, we're just like, ah, I can't be bothered. We're just the kids, you know, body parts are body parts. <laughs> What have you been loving lately that you think the listeners might love too? Well, my sister and I are kind of on learning more about ourselves and stuff and reprogramming our brain. 
and getting rid of the lies we believe like forever. And so like one of the ones we're, we're really on each other about is only taking responsibility for things that are in our control. In other mm. words, we can't make other people happy. It's not our job to fix everything and really just taking control of what is ours to control. Like, don't take on a burden that isn't your burden. And that is, that's so good because some of us just naturally do that. We take on every burden we see. And if it's not something that you can do anything about, then it be- best not to do that. Yeah. But right. That's a, that's a hard lesson to learn. It, it is a hard lesson, especially as a mother. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, yes. you want to be a good friend, a good sister, a good, you know, whatever. We have that mothering instinct, you know. What is one surprising thing about you that nobody would know just by looking? Oh, I cannot sneeze quietly at all. I am probably the loudest sneezer you have ever even heard. (laughs) Really? My teenage friend, I realized this when I was a teenager, and she would sneeze and it'd sound like a little mouse, like Mm -hmm. two rooms over sneezing. Like, what? (laughs) What was that noise? It was so quiet. (laughs) I cannot sneeze quietly, and I have tried. practically blown my eardrums out, you know, and things out (laughs) my mouth and nose and everything. And it's horrible because it'll be like in the middle of a funeral and they'll be like (laughs) walking the casket down. And I'm thinking, no, Teresa, no, please don't sneeze. Oh, yeah. And then this explosion occurs. (laughs) (laughs) And my husband's always like, like it's anything new. I mean, we've been married a while because Teresa, you're the loudest sneezer. And I'm yeah, I know. I mean, why are you telling me that again? It's really hard not to, but you know, we've been through this. I can't. (laughs) We've been through this multiple times. So yes, I I wish I knew how to sneeze quieter, but I I just don't. Well, you know what? It makes me feel better because my husband is the loudest sneezer I know, and I feel like he's trying to kill me. (laughs) I really do. I'm like, Scott, you're trying to even out our life expectancies. Like every time you sneeze is shaving moments off my life. But I think to myself, he ought to be able to do that different. But it sounds to me like you can't do it differently. So maybe he can't do it differently. Yeah, no, I have tried and <laughs> injured myself in the process. But no, I can't. So now I just like let it come. I don't want him to sprain his diaphragm or something. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't tell that by looking at somebody. You're a loud sneezer. No, you sure can't because you you seem like a delicate and quiet person just by the way you speak, you know. So <laughs> Right, yes. Oh, that's funny. Okay, well tell the listeners all the places where they can find you online. They can find me at my website, TeresaBodecker.com. And actually at my website, I have 42 podcasts that I recorded. They're all of funny stories. Oh, fun. Less than 20 minutes long usually. It's called Life As It Comes. And it's also like on iTunes and all the places. And I'm on Facebook too. I'm going to spell that for you guys. T-H-E-R-E-S-A-B-O-E-D-E-K-E-R.com. I will definitely link to both of those places. Teresa, you are so much fun. (laughs) Thank you so, so much for being with me today. This has been delightful. (laughs) Thank you, Joanne. It has been very fun. Okay, you guys, that was so much fun. Thank you for listening to the Fancy Free Podcast this week. Make sure you check out the show notes at fancyfreepodcast.com slash episode 121 so that you can check out the links that we mentioned. If you want more laughter and sharing and connection, join us in the Fancy Free Facebook group. The question of the week this week is, what is the most bad naked? Let's keep it not sexual, but the most bad naked that you've ever done. Like Teresa kicking down the door between the garage and the kitchen, probably pretty bad naked. (laughs) I love it. It's so funny. Don't forget to check out Shelfie Shop at S-H-E-L-F-I-E-S-H-O-P-P-E. If you use the code Fancy Free, you'll get free shipping on anything you order. And if you're like me and you get your boobs stuck in your armpits when you sleep, you might want to try some Shelfies. Next week on the show, we will have... Samantha Wall Jasper, which is like the most fun last name I think I've ever heard, who is another fellow Her View from Home author. And she has oh, she has a wardrobe malfunction to tell us about. You guys definitely come back next week to hear my conversation with Samantha. Have a wonderful week and remember, no one is as fancy as they look. <laughs>